Konnichiwa, as to this. And I'm back with part 2 of the waffle video, and this time we'll talk about materials. So, let's get started. So, maybe start with the plate, so, because it's kind of simpler. So, let me add a material to my plate and let it load for a little bit. And I'm gonna call this plate. Looks simple, right? So, um, let me get into the shading tab and I'm going to make a really simple two step shader. So, this is what we have in the shader a principal BSDF, and that's all we got. But that's pretty much enough for us to start with our kind of anime-like material. So what I'm gonna do, um, since the plate is a little bit more reflective, I'm going to go down to the roughness and just decrease it for a little bit. Like this. Pretty much like close to zero. And since I think the light is a little bit too close to the plate, I'm going to move it a little bit further. This way we can kind of get back those highlights along the plate like this just a little bit further away from our objects so now we have these little highlights along the plate so what we can do now is to add something after the principal bsdf and you know what i do usually i'm going to add a shader to rgb after the principal bsdf now we can change the shader data back to color data and a good thing about the color data is we can modify it using different operations such as adding a converter color ramp after the shader to RGB so what we can do is to just set this to constant and we have two steps of colors like this well, I'm, what I'm gonna do is to just add one more step, like this. So now we have two, three colors like this. So I'm going to keep this as white and kind of around here to get the highlights. And the second color, I'm going to set it to something like a lighter gray, like this. A lighter gray, just a really light gray. And then we are going to change the black to something a little bit more um, lighter, maybe a little bit like brownish. It's really a choice of color, so as long as it makes sense in your art, I guess it's okay. So yeah, this is what we have right now. Maybe we are going to come back to this material and modify some stuff later. So this is... What I'm gonna do for now. So now let's add some shaders to the waffles. So I'm going to click on one of the waffles and just go to materials and add a waffle. Just like this. And then for this one I'm also going to use a waffle material because they're the same. So what I'm gonna do is to use the ambient occlusion for the waffle to, to just extract some of the edges inside. So what I'm going to do is to just go back to the scene, render properties, and just go to ambient occlusion and make sure that this is checked. And perhaps I'm going to check bloom as well, just so we can use it later. And go down to color management and make sure this is standard. I forgot to do this all the time, but now I hope it's not too late. Make sure this is standard if you're doing um, stylized stuff most of the time. So now what we can do is to just go back to the material of the waffle. So by the way, make sure you go to edit, preferences, and then go to add-ons and make sure that node wrangler is turned on. So we can use some of the shortcuts in our node um, editor. Let's go back into the waffle material. And what I'm going to do is to just add shift A input ambient occlusion. Now let's control shift left click on this node. This is what we got and that's pretty interesting is we can get some of the edges right here. So maybe we can use this as a factor 
into a mix RGB. So let's add a color mix RGB and make sure this is in the factor. So now change the color one um, back to black so we can see this a little bit better and this one to white just so we can see this better for now. If we try to increase the distance, we can get this stronger ambient occlusion. What we can also do is to just add um, a converter math after the ambient occlusion and change this to power. And if we increase the exponent, we can get a much stronger difference contrast in our colors so this is pretty nice i guess so what i'm gonna do is to just is to just change the dark color to kind of a dark brown like this like the colors that you see in waffles like this just around the color like this we can adjust this later anyway so and the white to something that is waffle color as well. Maybe not so saturated somewhere. Let me take a look at the references. Make sure to always go back to your references and choose your colors based on how they actually look in real life or in anime. So this is a little bit too saturated. So maybe a little bit towards the red orange side just like this then maybe just change this to something a little bit more saturated like this let me try and increase the exponent for a little bit more like this and just change this to a lighter color like this maybe You know, there are a little bit of noise that we can see right here. Hopefully, they are going to be gone by the time we do our render. So, what I'm going to do is to just go to the subsurf and maybe increase this by one more step. And this is pretty good. And yeah, like I said, we can always go back and modify this later. So, what we can do now is to add a little bit of sugar on top of our waffles. So maybe let me take this waffle and just make a new material and call this waffle um, underscore sugar, just like sugar, okay, sugar. And then um, what I'm going to do is to just go to front view by hitting one like this and then go to tab, edit mode and just let me apply this mirror modifier first. So apply this. So let me go ahead and hit tab and then U. Let me unwrap this with the project from view bounce options. So now it's going to fill the whole UV area. What I'm gonna do is to use this um, UV coordinates as a mask for our sugar. So I only want the sugar to be maybe like the top part of the waffle. So what I mean is, let me demonstrate here really quick. So shift A, let's go to texture and texture coordinate, not texture, it's input texture coordinate. So right here we have a UV input. So let me shift, control shift, left click on this three times. So until it's on the UV option. And then what I'm gonna do is to go to shift A, converter, separate, H X, Y, Z. And what I'm going to do is to take the Y coordinate. We can see that our waffle has the entire UV Y coordinates along the vertical direction, which is really nice for us to use this as a mask. So shift a converter color ramp. And what we can do is to use this color ramp after our Y coordinates and just bring this up so it only covers like the top part of our waffles. I'm going to make sure that 
um, the squares here are still a little bit gray instead of completely black like this because if this is the case we only have the sugar on the white parts which is pretty weird so let me just bring this down a little bit and clip the white towards the black like this so now we have a mask maybe bring this down a little bit more like this around something like this so this is gonna be the mask for the sugar and right here we can just bring this down and let me delete the principle right here we are probably not gonna use it for now so what we can do is to add some sugar just like what we did in the previous um, souffle pancake video so shift a texture and add a Voronoi texture right here so now let's go to distance so you can see that the, the Voronoi texture is kind of distorted so let me hit ctrl T on the Voronoi texture so now we are gonna have this set of nodes so what we can plug in to the vector is instead of generated use the object so now they are a little bit more regular in shape so this texture is pr pretty much going to be our sugar. But what we are going to do is to add the Shift A color ramp after the Voronoi texture. And we are going to flip the black and white. Because if we take a look at the texture, we, we what we want are going to be this little rounded, rounded bubbles right here. And we want them to be white instead. So we want the spaces to be black and these bubbles to be white. So we are going to flip the colors like this. So, th so this is what we have right now. What I'm going to do is to just clip the black towards the white like this. So now we have these little dots. And let me increase the scale by a lot. Just like this. And now we can add this on top of our base color so maybe to organize our notes um, a little bit more we can use frames to just group our notes together so let me hit shift a and go to layout frame and just place a frame around our base notes so i'm going to select all these notes the base color notes and then shift click onto the frame okay and then control P to just put them into the frame like this. And we can we can give the frame a color, maybe an orange color like this. And then maybe for these sugar nodes, we can add another frame and just parent them into the frame and use a color that's kind of white like this. So what we can do is to take this mask and then put, put it somewhere right here. And then what I'm gonna do is to hit Control Shift, right click onto our sugar color ramp right here. And now we can see, we can drag this thing on top of our base color. And when we do this, we are gonna have a mix node. And for the mix node, if we do completely one, it's gonna be the lower input so it's gonna be our base color and if it's zero then it's gonna be our sugar so what we can do now is to use this y coordinates of the UV to drive this mix node we want the top part to have more of the sugar so we want to swap this inputs so make sure that the sugar is at the bottom so this is one color two is one and the top input is zero so the base color so if we plug this into our factor like this and just control shift back onto this mix node we can see that our colors are being mixed like this but wait this is weird because we are mixing like the black and white color on top of our base color so for the white parts of this mask 
it's going to be completely this, right? So what we can do is to just change, we can change the blending mode of this into add. So now we are adding the sugars on top instead of just mixing them. So we don't have the black parts. If we add black onto other colors, it's still going to be that color. But if we add something brighter, then it's going to be this brighter color, which are our sugars. Hopefully that this makes sense. Um, we can just increase or decrease the size. Just adjust things for a little bit more so they look a little bit better. I think the mask is a little bit too um, sharp. So I'm just going to bring this down so it's less sharp like this so yeah this is pretty nice um so what we can do next is to multiply some two-step shadows on top of our waffles so now i'm going to hit shift a and add a shader diffuse bsdf or just your standard um principal bsdf it's the same thing in this case in this case so let me take a look at the diffuse bsdf by control shift left click on it and add a shader to rgb after the diffuse and then color ramp like this just like what i do all the time and let me just increase the roughness of the diffuse as well make sure it's one and then i can start to extract the shadows for our waffles like this maybe something like this so this is our color that we got earlier so what we can do is to just control shift right click on this um diffuse shadow and just drag this on top of our previous notes like this so now we have another mixed note and instead of using add this time, we are going to multiply the darker shadows on top. So change mix to multiply like this. And then change the factor all the way to one. And for the black color of this set of nodes of the diffuse shadows, let me just change the black to the shadow color that we want. So make it a little bit less dark and probably something like this color you know something like this you can get the hex code if you want so something like this so what i'm gonna do is i want this set of shadows to be used on this other waffle as well so i'm going to come here and make sure that you know uh, your mouse is in this node editor and i'm going to select the diffuse shader to rgb and color ramp and the multiply and click um, and hit Control c for copy so make sure your mouse is in this area when you hit copy or else it doesn't work so copy Control c and let me go to this color right here let me delete the diffuse bsdf i mean the principal and just Control v and paste the notes make sure your mouse is also in the note editor or the material editor now we can just plug this base color to the top input and control shift left click on this node so now we also have our shadows on the lower waffle so now how about we take a look at the ice cream material i'm going to select the ice cream and then i'm going to add a material called ice cream so ice ice cream like this ice cream okay probably there's another material that i made previously so i'm just gonna rename this ice cream so now let me start by deleting this principal bsdf because we don't have to use it for now and what i'm gonna do is to add a noise texture so shift a texture and then noise texture Control shift left click on this so we can preview the noise and what i'm gonna do is to Control t while selecting the noise texture so we have these notes connected to the noise texture what i want to do is to squash this noise texture along one of the axes 
So maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna do it on the x-axis. So we are kind of getting these stripes right here. And then perhaps I'm going to play around with the sliders in the noise texture. But we can come back and change it anytime, so maybe play around with the roughness. While we keep the detail at 2, you can see if we change the noise roughness, we see a lot less detail if we bring this down. If we turn this up, it, it has a lot of detail, right? So... This detail slider actually affects the roughness slider for a little bit. So if we if we turn down this detail to zero, this roughness slider doesn't do anything. If we turn this up, we can see that we can get a lot of fine detail or we can have less detail by just changing the roughness. So I'll just keep the detail at two and then probably turn down the roughness for a little bit just to have some less complex shapes right here. So what I'm gonna do is to select all these nodes and shift D to copy and duplicate one more set. And this time I'm going to squash it on another axis. So maybe the Z axis. So maybe let me control shift left click on this one and you can see that I'm creating these horizontal um, stripes. So now we have both of these. So now what we can do is to mix these two noise together. I'm gonna hit Control, Shift, and right click on the bottom one, the bottom noise, and just drag this onto the top of the other noise. Now we have a mix RGB node. And you can see we are mixing between these two. What I wanna do is to use another noise as, as a factor of this mix RGB. So let me copy these and just shift D and create another set and this time I don't want this to be squashed so maybe just change it change this back to one and then let me plug this factor into this factor so now after we plug in this noise into the factor this is what we get and perhaps we can add some color ramps shift a converter color ramp and just put it after the mixing noise so we can kind of clip the boundaries like this between the different noise we can increase or decrease the scale it's really up to you to to find the right spot of your ice cream because it doesn't really matter what kind of numbers you set in here as long as you get what you want but how about I'm just gonna clip the black and white together so we can kind of get some clearer boundaries between the horizontal and vertical stripes. So now, perhaps I'm gonna add one more layer of noise. So I'm gonna select these noise nodes and then Shift D and duplicate again. And I'm gonna mix this on top of the mix RGB nodes. So Control Shift, right click, and drag this on top. So now that we have some noise mixed on top of our previous notes, we can start playing around with the factor and see how it looks. Perhaps I want a little bit more detail on this um, noise that's layered on top, so maybe add a little bit more detail and increase the roughness so we have more detail. Maybe play around with the scale. We can't really have a good mix between the two, so instead of using the mix blending mode, Maybe I'm gonna use add or multiply and see how it looks. If I change it to add, it looks like this. It's a little bit too intense, honestly. So what I can do is to add another color ramp after this noise. And then we can clip the black and white together and get some interesting shapes like this. So now we have something like this. It's just actually a bunch of noises mixed together. So you can add a lot more layers of noise on top. This is pretty much what I want at this point. So now how about we add some colors onto our ice cream. I kind of like matcha ice cream right now. So maybe shift A, converter, color ramp, and put this at the end. And by the way, if you hear some noise in the background, it's my laptop. It's 
getting really noisy when I record these videos, so I'm sorry if my voice starts to muffle a little bit, but I'm gonna change this color to something like a matcha ice cream color, so maybe something like this. Put your mouse on top of the color, Control c and then we can paste it onto the white as well, Control v while your mouse is hovering on top right here. And then we can turn this up so it's a little bit brighter, a little bit more like matcha. Maybe we can try and turn this into a constant interpolation. And then we can add one more step of color and perhaps just turn this up for a little bit and just play around with the color ram. And just perhaps I'm gonna bring this dark color up a little bit so there's less contrast going on. And what I can do is to add some shading on top. Maybe I should have a quick overview of this uh, material first. So maybe we can organize these for a little bit. So these two noises are the stripes. Some noises that I squashed along different axes. For, so for this one is the X and also for this one is the Z axis. And then we are using another noise to mix the two stripe patterns right here. And then we add another layer of noise finer details on top of everything. So this is what we have after missing all those noises. And we used the add blending mode in this mix RGB. So it's a lot more brighter. And after adding those colors, this is how it looks like. So what I'm gonna do now is to add some shading on top. Shift A and then shader, diffuse BSDF. And like what I always do, I'm going to add Converter Shader to RGB. And this only works in Eevee. So make sure you are in Eevee or else this won't work. And then a color ramp after this. And then you know what I do. Always use the constant and then just kind of bring this down so we have the shadows. What we can do is to control shift right click and mix this on top of our ice cream color. And now we have our shadows being mixed on top of our ice cream. Of course, we want to change this to multiply or any mode that works for you, but multiply is the mode that I'm going to use. So only the darker part is going to affect the color. So if I do this, you can see it gets a lot more darker like this. But what I'm going to do is to actually modify the normal of this diffuse BSDF so we can change the shadow shapes for a little bit. So it's not like a really sharp shadow because it doesn't make sense. So now we can take one of the noise, one of the mixed noise that we have, perhaps right here, right before the color. We can use this noise right before the color and use it as a normal to our diffuse BSDF right here. So probably I'm going to bring this over for a little bit. And what I'm going to do is to add a shift A vector bump. And this way we can use this noise, plug it into the height, plug it into the height right here. And we can use this normal as the normal of the diffuse BSDF. Now let's take a look at how it looks. And now it looks absolutely crazy. And yes, we can maybe change this up a little bit so it doesn't look too harsh. So let me add, before the bump, let me add a converter color ramp right here. So now we can use this color ramp to kind of play around with colors. What I'm gonna do is to just bring the white a little bit more closer to the gray-ish color around 0 0.5 and then the black also higher a little bit. So the difference between the bumps is less intense. But it's still a little bit too much for me so maybe I'm gonna clip this together like this.
just a little bit of bump is enough for me. So now this is what we have for the color ramp right now before the bump. Maybe it's still way too intense, so maybe we can change the strength of the bump. So it's lower like this. So this is what we have for the color ramp before the bump. But still, it's a little bit too strong, right? So maybe I think we can adjust the um, details of this noise. Because this is the noise that's giving all those details. And we don't want that much detail probably. So maybe decrease the detail and the roughness. Let's take a look at how it looks right now. Maybe we can take a look at this while adjusting the detail level. So not too much, but still a little bit of detail in there. And perhaps we can change the color of the ice cream again. So maybe just make it a little bit more bright like this. And maybe just turn down those shadows a little bit more. Just bring everything up a little bit so it's less intense. So I guess this is pretty much close to what I want. Maybe it's still a little bit too dark. Like this maybe. And then turn the shadow back up for a little bit more. It's really intense for me, so maybe I want to add a little bit more. I'm just going to keep changing stuff until forever. My computer is starting to get a bit laggy, so I'm sorry if everything starts to lag for a little bit. So perhaps let me organize this for a little bit more. So we can hit Shift A, Layout, Frame. And these are the stripes noises that we had. So. I'm going to parent this, these nodes onto this frame and just give it a color or something like this and just call this um, stripe. Stripes. And then this is the mix factor for the stripes. So I'm going to add another frame and just parent these nodes onto this frame. And then call this something like stripe mix vector. And then we have this noise right here. That is our fine detail. So shift A, add a frame and just parent this to the frame and call this maybe a color like this and call this and just call this fine detail probably. So now that we have the ice cream material, maybe we want a little bit of variation in the shape of the ice cream. So maybe let me add a displace modifier, get a new texture, and then change this texture to clouds. And maybe I'm just going to increase the size and decrease the strength like this. So it's not way too much it's just a little bit just to make it a little bit less um like a sphere so now maybe let me add a table for this to put on top so let me add a mesh and then a cube and then scale this up a little bit and s z and scale it down along the z axis just make this a little bit more bigger like a table and just place it below our plate like this so now we have our table